Uh, so we'll just start off the interview just asking a pretty general question. You originally started out as a radio job, but what made you decide to pick up music as well? I actually um, wrote my first song in Neon. Um, oh. as, as I was in school, and I still remember where I was, I wrote it at the atrium, right outside where, oh. you know, the bus stop, we used to have a cheers there. What's there now? I mean, oh, just next to the bus stop. Right, right. Isn't like when you walk into the bus stop, like from, like when you reach school, right? You're walking mm-hmm. in and then there's like a small like convenience store. Is, is there a convenience store there now? No. Dude. I don't think so. No. The main bus stop or the one at the The back? main bus stop. Like the main bus stop, like when you drop no, off and then you turn no. like back to right towards like where the school gate is, the main school gate. No, no there's we nothing there. Have- no. Okay. For, for anyone <laughs> like my generation, anything before, like we would have, we had a Cheers there. I think before Cheers, there was something oh, else. Wow. And it was like a seating area, right? So it's right in front of like the big field when you first walk in. And um, I sat there at night and I wrote a song. I was like 17 years old. Cause I was, cause the thing about film is like, I love film, right? Mm-hmm. I love writing. I love the filmmaking process, but it's also a really long drawn out process. So you can have an idea of a story and then you want to turn it into a film, but then you have all these moving parts. You have all these different people's hands on it. You have your producers telling you how it should be. Um, you got your actors that you got to trust with. You got to deal with like production, all all those things. So by the time you see your product, okay, it's like months, years later. Um, you, you know, whereas for a song, mm-hmm. I felt like it was really immediate. Like if if I felt something, if I had a crush on someone, <laughs> I didn't have to write a screenplay and then have it approved and then find yeah. sort of like express yeah. that. Whereas for a song, it was really immediate, and I could have control over all these different elements you know mm-hmm. so I actually started writing music really early on I didn't want to wait around for because like my generation was a lot of Singapore Idol you mm. know like waiting for an mm-hmm. audition in order for you mm-hmm. to get that placement I didn't want to like audition for something because I knew that I would not go well in that process like in the singing competition process you know like mm-hmm. I don't so um, I joined radio so that I could understand how PR works, you know, um, receiving press releases, writing press releases. Um, what is it really like when you, like, I've interviewed so many people now that I know what they're facing, both mm-hmm. locally, regionally, internationally, what all these different stories are, you know. Nice. I'll try to give you shorter answers. Like, I'm really bad. No, 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 see, don't worry. Don't worry. No. <laughs> No, I was just telling Dash earlier on that like we love hearing your stories. Yeah. Like, we hear it all over and over and over again. We just love it. <laughs> For real, it's an annoying grandfather. Okay, so moving on. Um, yeah. so your most played song on Spotify is Paradise with a total of 186 streams. So congrats on that. So we want to know what's the inspiration behind that song. Paradise. Paradise was like a surprise one, like. I wrote Paradise for a friend's short film, actually. Uh, it's called Hurt. Uh, it's this guy named Kieran. He's an incredible filmmaker. And I wrote Paradise just for the short film. Like, I wasn't sure if I was going to release it, you know, like on, like, Spotify or Apple Music or anything like that. Because, like, that was not the direction I, I thought I would go into. Mm-hmm. And it still really isn't, in a sense. Um, for me... It's, it's that song that, like, if I can be, like, super frank, it's, it's, it's that song that I, I don't know, I feel, I don't feel as connected to that song, to be perfectly yeah. honest, you know? Um, it's very strange. Like, I, I, get, I, I, don't, I try not to listen to the ballad songs that I write, mm-hmm. and I'm sure Paradise represented where I was, because I remember I wrote it, in my radio station, like at the rooftop, it was raining and I was in this small corner that was sheltered and I had a guitar with me and I and I knew I had to like churn out a song for my friend short film fast, you know? So I just like mm-hmm. thought of where I was feeling then and then I wrote Paradise really fast and I sent it over a voice memo. He liked it. We recorded it at Zendel, in the early stages of Zendel. So this is like John Choas from the Sam Rillos. Right, so now he has his own record label and uh, like music recording studio. So this is the early stages of Zendo Records. So we recorded it there, and yeah, it's 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 nice. It's 
it's just weird because like I didn't spend a lot of time with this song to really craft it and like um it was it was just something that was so spontaneous it was so fast and then we put it out there and then people like it, you know, but I don't really remember a lot about where I was when I wrote it or what it was about. I mean, songwriting happens in like the craziest situations always. Um, so congratulations on All I Want to Do, which is your Thank latest you. song. Congratulations on that. Um, but the music style of it is obviously very drastic. Um, it's a very drastic change from Paradise. So was that musical like change very... Um, intentional or was it something that just happened? Even though it is really colorful and it's really fun and vibrant, it, it came from a very like vulnerable place. So if you read the mm-hmm. lyrics, it's about, you know, um, the, the wonder of like falling in love, you know, like, like I'm, I'm so quick to help someone up and like uh, prop them up and give them advice. But like, I'm so bad at taking my own advice and, and I go into such optimism and my friends say you should be living for you. And at the end of the day, like I just get so frustrated. I just want to disappear because I just don't know where my place is, you know? Um, and then I worked with, um, I found this guy, Kylan, uh, who is from Brazil, he produced a song. And he made this so this insanely iridescent song. <laughs> and then like, he sent it to me, like the early stems and stuff. And I'm like listening to it. And I'm like, I, I don't know how to write a happy song, you know? Like this sounds so happy and I don't have anything prepared. Cause like how I write is I journal a lot. Like I, on my notes app, anytime I feel a word or a phrase that I'm connected to, I'll journal it down or I'll journal my thoughts. And then mm-hmm. when I'm writing a song, I go to my journal first. I'm like, okay, what have I written that I kind of liked the the free, the framing of, of sentence or phrases and, and, then I'll start to borrow a few pieces from my journal and then build a song. And I went through my journal and I'm like, there's nothing here that fits this colorful mm. song. And he's like, you've got 12 hours to decide. Let me know if you want it. But I really like the beat. Like, I really <laughs> like the beat. Because like, like, I'm listening, like, I, I'm hearing like Cindy Lauper. I'm hearing like Charlie <laughs> XCX. I'm hearing like... Yeah. Um, like um, Robin on it, you know, like I, I really like that energy. It's like all these things that I aspire to feel, but I wasn't mm-hmm. sure if I had anything to say in that spirit. Um, so I went into the studio with Mark Lynn. Uh, I record a lot of vocals with him. He's from um, uh, BRB. He was, he was in mm-hmm. Trick. And out of nowhere, like the two came together and like we were listening to it back and going like, oh, <gasps> This actually works. Like, this actually works. Uh, and then I wrote the second half of the song, the second verse, after we had already recorded the first, in the same session. So mm-hmm. after we recorded the first verse in the chorus, and we're doing all these harmonies, and I'm having so much fun with it, I started going like, okay, I'm gonna, I wanna try to do like, like that Michael Jackson rhythm that I feel like is missing right now. So I was like, okay, I wanna do that. I wanna play around with that. I wanna do a bridge where I'm just doing the Mariah Carey runs. I wanna live that. <laughs> I wanna do a little Katy Perry, the, the way she does the, oh, run away, run away. That's a very Katy Perry thing. So I'm like, I wanna do that as well. So I just wanna like throw in all my greatest, like all my things I love, like a greatest mm-hmm. hits of everything that makes me happy. And it was, it just kind of happened very organically in February. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, like, okay, so I would say, like, like what you said, the, the tempo is very upbeat, but it has a very different take from what the meaning is behind the song. So what is, like, the message you want to tell your listeners through this song? Um, I, all I want to do is the phrase that I mutter under my breath a lot. A lot, even after I recorded the song, like even after mm-hmm. the rec- I recorded the song, like I, I'm, I feel like I'm horrible at dating. I feel like I don't know how dating works. I don't understand the game. I don't understand because I'm like I've lived through my entire life with Hollywood telling me this is how romance yeah. works and this yeah. is how you ought to be, and, and I go in there just like confused. And when that happens. I say all I, like, I just want to disappear. I can't do this anymore. I just want to disappear. I want to eject myself. I want to back away. And that's something I say all the time. And I remember, like, after recording the song, we had already sent it for mastering. And Mm -hmm. I had that feeling again. And I started to say, like, I just want to disappear. I can't, like, I just want to get away right now. Um, And then I was like, oh, yeah, I wrote a song called All I Want to Do. Like, I, I completely forgot, like, the two, you know? I was like, oh, yeah. So then I listened to that song. I remember I was, I was in Chinatown, and I listened to, to my own song. And then I heard my own voice 
who is like so colorful in this song and giving me advice. You know, it's like, haven't mm -hmm. I learned my lesson each time I heard? I say never again, you know? So I'm like hearing myself like say all these things and declare all these things while I'm feeling the opposite where I'm just like, uh -huh, you know? Mm -hmm. So like yeah. in a way the song pulled me up, you know? And like, I feel like the song you can listen to the song about escapism and, and you can find meaning in that for yourself. But if there's something that I can share about the production of this song, the conceptualization of this song, is that I created my own antidote for myself. You know, it's like I, and I feel like all of us can do that with our skill sets, you know, even as, if it's something as simple as just like picking up your phone and like voice record and, and speak, you know, just speak to it and then play it back you know, record these time capsules of how you're feeling at different times of your life. You know, mm -hmm. um, if, if you're, if you want to cook, cook something amazing and like, you know, like feed yourselves, you know, like give yourselves that good nutrition and vitamins and you <laughs> made, you know, like you heal yourself, you know, like I yeah. heal myself with my music, you know? So regardless of how many plays it gets on Spotify, regardless of whether or not it wins a Grammy or it goes to number one on the Billboard charts, like I made something that is helping me through this period. Yeah. You know, so if I'm ever down, I can remember that, like, I wrote a song uh, from a place of down and then going up, and I recorded these time capsules in the song together, so I can listen to it whenever I need it, you know, it's my voice literally, like, commanding me. So uh, you started the All I Want to Do challenge on uh, Instagram. There's so, like, what? challenges, dude. There's, like, runaway <laughs> challenges. <laughs> so many. I was so confused with this whole TikTok thing. Like, everyone's like, you need to oh jump Oh, my God. Say I, <laughs> I, oh. We're all just trying our best on TikTok here to be as relevant yeah. as possible. I cut you off. Um, all I want to do is challenge. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, like, what inspired you to get on TikTok to start the challenge? No inspiration whatsoever. <laughs> it was, um, it was peer pressure. It was straight up peer pressure. <laughs> oh, um, dude. Um, because, because of artists like Benny and Super Lonely and to see slad and like oh these songs became huge on tiktok you should totally do tiktok like i i think tiktok is incredible like when i get on the mm -hmm. app and i look at people's tiktoks i'm like oh my gosh i can see why this is so brilliant you know like some of it is hilarious you know some of it yeah. is just like, one thing incredible the dance moves are incredible it's very creative and i like that like fans are making it their own and organically like pushing the song for the artist as well. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel a bit iffy about how people are starting to say like this is dictating how music should be made or mm -hmm. um, how like when an artist puts out something, they have to have a TikTok challenge. They have to like, I honestly mm -hmm. did that because like people told me I should, you know? I, what, do, does that mean that I don't want to see what, what people can come up with? No, absolutely. Like, I, I don't care what platform you do it on. You can feel, like, and, and even the challenge that I put on my Instagram, like, I, I, I straight up said, like, you can post it on Instagram, you can post it on, on, on TikTok. If you can DM me the video, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't need it to be a challenge. I don't need to be a hashtag, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't really super understand this whole thing. You know, like, mm -hmm. I feel like it shouldn't be initiated by me. It should be by whoever finds the song, but like I don't have that massive fan base, you know. So I'm, I'm putting out like I was I set aside some money for a lyric video, mm -hmm. right? Um, that I saved up for. I'm still an independent artist, but I can't shoot anything right now. Okay, so I thought, okay, why don't I just put the money in their hands? Okay, mm -hmm. we'll do the TikTok challenge. Okay, <laughs> um, we'll do. But I'll just. It's like anyone can shoot anything they want. Okay, just make it fun, make it cool, share it around. I'm trying to do whatever I can to get the song out as far out as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and if you share with me your videos, if I like it, I'll repost it. I'll give you $50. Like I'll pay now you $50. But you can use it for groceries. You can donate it. You know, there are all these different existing charities out there and avenues yeah. that mm -hmm. you can put your money in. So that's it. Like, it's, it's just a fun little experiment. Okay, let's go back to 2017. So you were one of the 17 artists who sang the cover of the song, This Is Me, from The Greatest oh. Showman, right? So how was the experience like for you, and how was it like to work with um, other talented musicians? Um, I remember, because that was, like, I think, the third time, the third time, yeah, that was the third time I met up with Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. met him a fourth time a couple of months after that. Um, in Sydney and when I was with him in Sydney like he asked me how was the experience mm -hmm. at Abbey Road in London you know so and I and I 
and I just like I didn't give him the PC answer. I just like straight up told him how I felt, which is still how I feel looking back at it now. Mm-hmm. And, and that is, I got to record at Abbey Road Studios. I got to be in yeah. London. Like, how cool is that? That is so, like, I think that was, that was my first time in London. You know, your first time in London and you're recording at Abbey Road <laughs> Abbey Studios. Road. Wow. You're making a song at Abbey Road Studios <laughs> and you're staying in a fancy yeah. hotel and food is paid for. Like, what is going on, right? So there is that aspect of it that will always be special, you know? Mm-hmm. For, for like, for someone like me in Singapore who's always dreamt of this whole music career thing, I don't have the, the money to just fly around wherever I want to, you know, like, especially mm-hmm. not London and at that time. So that was all cool. But it was also crazy stressful because I'm not in my zone. Like, I'm not in the environment that I'm comfortable in. I am around, like, 90% white people, you know, Mm-hmm. And you cannot help but also feel that inferiority complex with your mm-hmm. race at the same time, you know? Because mm-hmm. it's like, th- I think there was like one person from Taiwan and I just like went to that person and spoke with Chinese mm-hmm. and, it, and it just <laughs> comforted you. Like sometimes you just need that, you know? Because you can't help but feel like oh, they all look so pretty. They all look like they're straight out of a magazine. And it's not like we're used to seeing these kind of faces or these kind of beauty mm-hmm. in Singapore, you know? Yeah. So you can't help but feel like, oh, I feel small right now and then you hear them sing that oh they're actually talented and they're nice (laughs) something gotta give right so I remember and I and I told I told I told you that like in in Sydney I said like the experience was incredible but I was also so nervous that I don't think I allowed myself to enjoy it more Mm -hmm. than I should have I remember I was in Abbey Road they gave us the song sheet for this is me and obviously we've never heard of the song this Mm -hmm. was like in June I think like May June and we didn't know what Greatest Showman was. We didn't know yeah. what this, whether the film was going to be good. We didn't know if it was like a full-blown musical. We, we, we didn't really understand the project, right? Because it was also mm-hmm. Hush Hush. Um, I got the song sheet for This Is Me. And, and they're like, like, I think in the music video, you can see us like practicing. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And they gave us all our different parts. Like, like Josh, you're going to sing this part. You know, so I'm brave, I'm Bruce, I'm who I'm meant to be, this is me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I, I rushed to the toilet. The moment they could give us toilet break, I rushed to the toilet mm-hmm. and I just like locked myself in the cubicle, which is something I used to do when I was in poly. <laughs> Whenever I get stressed out, like, yeah, so whatever, I locked myself in a cubicle, like level nine toilet in FMS block. Oh, dude. All the way to the end, all the way to the end last cubicle because it's more spacious. And I like, I oh, locked my myself. Head. In the toilet with the song sheet for this is me and i was like going through it and like trying to make sure that i can remember it and get the key right so i'm like imagining the line before me that person singing it and making sure that i can jump in because i don't want to be that one who's like i am you know like 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 <laughs> drop the ball i, I don't want to yeah. be that person and also they're filming the entire process you know so like i was like uh how do i look how do i sound how do I function as a person in, in the room as well, you know? So like all these things, there was just so much pressure. And I remember like coming back to the hotel room after recording um, the song and I just was so drained. I just remember being so mm-hmm. drained. And then I took like a walk, like late at night by myself, just like a walk around, um, was, it, was it Piccadilly? Like that, that whole area and just by myself and just like taking it in because I hadn't had time to take it in. Mm-hmm. you know because there were cameras every freaking where you went mm-hmm. you yeah. know so it was cool but it was also like extremely stressful yeah i can't imagine i can't i can't imagine yeah. oh my god being in a room full of strangers that have that kind of talent no way <laughs> okay so uh for the next question i just wanted to know what keeps you motivated to create music um that's so true to who you are Okay, well, if we think motivation-wise, okay, like, motivation-wise would be listening to other people's music, you know? Like, I'll listen to mm-hmm. a new single by an artist that I really like. And be like, oh, that was so cool. I could do something like that. I wonder how I would do it. Hmm, you know, like, I've always wanted to, you know, like, I'll be like, oh, I've always wanted to do, like, a folk song. And like, oh, I could try doing a country song. You know, like, so <laughs> motivation-wise, the creating comes from that, like, actually comes from, like, external sources, like, looking at that, mm-hmm. oh, that'd be cool. But, like, actually creating it comes from inside and it's it's less um less of like an action or a trigger it's just more of it's really spontaneous you know like Mm -hmm. I can't help myself you know like I wasn't sure 
if I wanted to do music anymore. And every time I say that, somehow I end up writing something. <laughs> and it's because I'll write something and be like, all I know is like music or um, like a film idea or, you know, like, uh, like I'll, I'll, I'll think of what avenue to sort of like put, like to use this fuel and put it into. You know, the vehicle for me has been music, you know? Mm-hmm. So regardless of what I do, somehow it just ends up back in that vehicle. Um, mm-hmm. And I end up, oh, great, I have a song now. Now do I want to record it? Because there are so many songs that I have recorded, but like I have not put out also at the same time because I'm also practicing this thing where not everything has to be for everyone, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like there's actually a song that I have called Karma, um, which is such an angry song. And it, I had it like produced and like mastered and everything ready to go, but I decided not to put it in there, um, not to release it ever. Um, because it's just like, it's one of those things where sometimes it's good to create something and then you just keep it for yourself and then you mm-hmm. just put it away. You know, yeah. like you save yeah. a draft, you know, like I, I think not everything has to be for release. Um, yeah. So I'm going to keep writing um, and I'm happy people like all I want to do. Um, but they also have a perception of what they would want the next single to be, you know? Mm-hmm. Even if, if like, like, next week I end up writing a really, really dark song, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think it will follow all I want to do really well, you know? So I may, may not release it. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> do you feel like a lot of pressure to like, to, you know, to do what people want you to do, that kind of thing? No, the pressure part, like usually like you know like earlier i was talking about the whole like tiktok thing and like making sure you have like x amount of followers or x amount of likes in order for you to deserve to be in that room and stuff like that you know like that's the part that the pressure comes in but usually that pressure doesn't amount to like it's not something that's like pressure okay i'm gonna go work hard it's a lot of pressure and then i end up beating myself up like what is wrong with me Hmm. you know the pressure to do the things that i don't really feel comfortable with doing that's the part that like gets to me more mm-hmm. um yeah okay moving on to something lighter if you could collaborate with anyone in the world local or international who would it be and why collaboration um i mean like i would love like i love mia so much like i would love to do a song with mia um i also think like I, like she helped me to embrace the tamil side of my ethnicity uh, a lot and i do think it would be so cool to have M- mia on a song with her i mean i also don't know how well it would be but like i, I also kind of don't care you know like, i'll just be like I yeah. song, like yeah. i don't care you know like <laughs> like part of me wants to like work with bjork and it'll be such a weird song but like i can say like I I know. Bjork, you know i mean like it, like there's so many there's so many there's like there's like the level of like uh, who do i want to work with because i think it'll sound great and it'll be like really exciting for like my career Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe even exciting for theirs. I don't know, like what I could add to that, uh, to their discography or to their catalog. You know how yeah. I can like help switch things up a little bit. You know, and then there's a level of like I just want to meet all my faves. You know, like <laughs> like like I want to do a song with Madonna since this is like not a, like this is fantasy, right? Like I want to do a song yeah. with Madonna. I want to do a song with Janet. I want to do a song like at the same time. I'm also kind kind of scared, especially like with the the ones that I crazy love, like yeah. MIA. <laughs> This is strange because, like, I've met a lot of, like, crazy famous people, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I've met a lot of crazy famous people, but um, there, are, there are very often the artists that I crazy love, like, love, you know? They're mm-hmm. not super famous. So there, there are all these different, you know, that, that like, I, I want to meet them, but I'm also kind of scared because, like, I don't know if I'll be able to listen to their music. You know how to react. <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't know how I can, like, like listen to this, the music the same way as well, you know? Because it's, like... Like, when I, like, I've interviewed Britney Spears, and I still, when I listen to Britney Spears all the time, and I listen to Britney all the time, I forget that I've interviewed her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that will happen. Maybe I'll like, <laughs> like <laughs> Britney. <laughs> okay. Love. During this uh, circuit breaker period, do you have any plans to, like, release any new music? Is it even possible to record anything right now? No. Uh, <laughs> no. I... Right before Circuit Breaker happened, I passed uh, my microphone setup. So I, I, I lent everything to my friend. And then COVID and Circuit Breaker happened. And I'm just like, ah, oh, now I can't sing. Now I have no microphone. And I have to like buy this online on Carousel. It's like, what is happening? I'm like in my room all the time. The paint job is not even finished. Like I started painting my room like ages ago and I just, just decided not to. Look at, look at this. Look at this. 
I, I painted it white, and then I didn't finish it because I got tired, you know? And now I have to deal with this. I have to deal with the repercussions of not completing, like, all the things I still do in my room, you know? So, like, I am not thinking about music right now. I feel like uh, mm-hmm. there's more than Much enough. needed break. Oh, yeah, there's more than enough uh, music out there right now. Last Friday, we had, what, 32 <laughs> different artists releasing songs. Yeah. Like, every Singaporean <laughs> decided to release songs. Every, <laughs> every Singaporean. And um, uh, I, 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 I have songs written. I have two other, three other songs that I have written that I think has potential for release. That I think mm-hmm. people can listen to it and it's accessible and it's really fun or it will make you feel a couple of things, you know. Um, I can't record it yet. I don't want to record it yet. I think I want some space. I am writing um, uh, hiragana right now. I'm learning Japanese mm-hmm. um, on my iPad and through apps and talking to my friend um, on house party. And uh, <laughs> yes. I'm jogging as much as I can because mm-hmm. it allows me to be outside of the house and like in the park and like without a mask, you know? Mm-hmm. Because when I'm at work or I'm traveling to work, as I still go to work every day, I have to wear a mask and it's like, you know, my whole face just gets like exfoliation, you know? <laughs> and it's like, I, so I'm enjoying jogging. I'm enjoying like, I'm discovering the beauty of like YouTube tutorials for, um, for everything, like from food to like, cook, like from cooking to meditation. Um, like I, yeah. I, I'm like enjoying all these things right now that like. It's time to self-care yeah like i'm not even spending enough time like i have not netflix anything dude like i've not watched that tiger wow. king show oh, i have not i have not money heist uh crash landing on you ita one class <laughs> I'm, I, I'm aware that they exist but i have not had any time to watch it because i'm just so like anytime i'm free i, I get on house party i see who's there and i try to socialize yeah. a little bit mm-hmm. or i go for a run or i practice my japanese um, and before when we could go out, I would write more, I would watch more movies because I'd go to the cinema a lot. Um, I, I would read a lot because I'd go to a cafe and read. I can't read in my room with like a 70 inch TV you know, <laughs> yeah. that I invest all this money on and surround sound system <laughs> and my PlayStation 4. How am I going to focus <laughs> on writing? And reading? You know, like, yeah. so, so yeah. I'm, just, I'm just trying to have fun right now as much as possible, yes. you know? It's important. It's very, very important. Okay, um, so before we end, we're going to go into a quick quick fire game. So just ask me some questions and then like whatever pops into your mind first, just say it, okay? Okay. Okay, the first question is, if you would be stuck doing just one thing for the rest of your life, which of the following would you choose? Film, radio, or music? Ooh. Uh, music. Ooh. Music, okay. Music, music. Okay, so second question is if someone gave you a free trip to any country of your choice, where would you go? Uh I'll always say Tokyo. Um in Japan. Oh. Yeah, Tokyo. Oh. Um well you said country, so maybe not just Tokyo. I'll I'll do Tokyo and then Kyoto and Osaka. Because like I have a really bad habit where I keep going to the same place over and over and over again. So <laughs> if you love it, if you, love yeah. it you can go as many times yeah. as you want. <laughs> exactly. Like I'll always like go back first to Tokyo and just check all the same places that I go to, make sure that they're still around and the food is still good. I'm like yes. spot check. You, you know, have like, to I'm, check. You have to check. You have to know. Yeah. And then I'll try something new. You know? So, but I'll always say Japan. I think I'll always say Japan. Okay. So, okay. which was your favorite module while you were studying in FSV? Um, introduction to film and film history. So, introduction to film was. It's, it's kind of like film history. So you analyze films and like, I thought it was like the craziest thing where my classroom is a cinema, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's yeah, just- Yeah, it's true. I can still remember, I still remember <laughs> the smell of the classroom. It has that theater smell, you know? I just love that every morning I'm going into a cinema and I'm watching mm-hmm. a movie, I'm mm-hmm. analyzing it with people around me. Like, I just, I, that was like some of like my favorite years of my life. Just like mm-hmm. watching movies every morning um, and just studying it and writing about what I've studied. <laughs> um, so yeah, I focus my OGP on those modules. Just so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is one song you wish you wrote and recorded? <gasps> Love that question. I, I think it would be MIA Paper Planes. I feel 
like in my eighth paper planes even though you see there's that also that aspect of like i don't live in america like i'm not an immigrant you know like mm-hmm. i don't know what i cannot write a song like that because it's not based on my experience you know mm-hmm. i would want this song to be mine mainly because it's so cool and it's so fun and i love the gunshots and i love the energy that this song has given to the world like people are just like you know like i love that and i want that to be something that i i, I wish i could put out you know but at the same time this is why this will always be really tough to answer because mm-hmm. i am not immigrant yeah, and this song is about the immigrant experience, you know. So I cannot just take the song as my own and be like, "Oh, Josh wrote that song." Because so when I do yeah. interviews, I'm like, what what story am I gonna give, you know? Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> but that will be cool. Okay, um, next one is what? Can you give us one word that describes your music best? I'm so bad at these. Like, describe yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's like there's so word. many words and yet so little come to me. And then, like, I'll go about the rest of my day, and then another word will land on me. I'm like, why didn't I just say that word? <laughs> um, fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I landed on the Go word. I'm, 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 very, I'm very proud of that. Yeah, fantasy is... See, thank you for that. Just, I, I, like, I do a lot of interviews. I don't get interviewed a lot, you know? But the thing I always share with people is that I always ask the questions that I want the, the interviewee to hear for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes like you're you're the catalyst for me like you're asking me questions and i'm saying these things to you but i'm also learning about what i'm saying and i'm testing with myself against my Mm -hmm. character like is that true what i just said you know and i just said fantasy and i 100 percent relate to that i'm just like yeah from now on i know the one word that represents is fantasy and you helped me to get to that thought so (laughs) that's our interviews okay so where do you see yourself in the next 10 years I don't see myself anything in the next few years. Like, I, 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 I did, did we think in like 10 months ago that we would see ourselves where we are right now? Like, Definitely uh, not. <laughs> like, yeah, I try not to, I try not to like um, think about that because it scares me. It, it, it gives me a lot of anxiety um, mm-hmm. when it should excite me, you know, which says a lot mm-hmm. about who I am. Uh, but um, hopefully I'll be alive. Hopefully I'll be healthy. <laughs> hopefully I will. Be have have happier days in a week. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. living better day. Thank you so much for joining us for answering our Thank questions. You. Thank sure. you. We'll Perfect. love to have you in our studio eventually when we get to go back soon. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. at one point. Sure. And congratulations on the release of your song. Of Thank you. Thank, okay. you, so Thank you so much for joining us. It's been lovely. It's been a Thank pleasure. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.